I have to make everything about horror book content, so... Ta-da! <laughs> but to be fair, Mike Flanagan also makes everything about horror book content, pretty much, so... Hey there Groovy Peeps, I'm Nightmare Maven. Welcome back to my channel. As you can tell from the title of this video, I'm gonna be talking about some horror books that I think would be perfect Mike Flanagan adaptations. <laughs> Mike Flanagan's movies and series, I feel like hold a special place in the horror genre, especially when it comes to hauntings, because all of his work involves being haunted in one shape or another. The themes of his work always revolve around characters being haunted by guilt and or trauma. He really tries to hit you in the heartstrings while also terrifying you. And because we're getting closer to the release of Mike Flanagan's adaptation of Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher, I've been thinking about other books that I feel like would fit Mike Flanagan's kind of like style and the themes he goes for very well. So consider this video me offering up my consultation services for the low, low price of zero dollars and zero cents. So this list is in no particular order, so I'm going to start with Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. The book follows a salvage crew that picks up the distress signal of a luxury spacecraft that got lost on its maiden voyage over 20 years ago. I for one think it would be really cool if Mike Flanagan tackled a space horror because space horror is cool, okay? It's a new environment, but there are still tons of ghosts to be had in this story. And plus I'd really just love to see the like Titanic-esque luxury of this spacecraft, but like abandoned and just things kind of like floating in zero gravity. I would love to see that put on like the big screen. The main character of the story, without spoiling anything, is the sole survivor of a pandemic-like event and thus has a lot of guilt and trauma of course going through that and so a lot of the personal ghosts that she's dealing with start coming to life as she starts exploring this abandoned spacecraft and I feel like it's just it's kind of perfect for a Flanagan adaptation. I feel like Ghost Eaters by Clay McLeod Chapman is kind of an obvious choice but a perfect one nonetheless. The book follows Erin, who, following the mysterious death of her ex-boyfriend, discovers a drug called Ghost that allows you to see the dead. You can check out my full review of it up here. I loved it so much that I gave it its own video. As you can imagine, there are themes of grief, of loss of a loved one, and uh, there is trauma from a toxic relationship, being Aaron's ex-boyfriend, um, but the themes go a little bit beyond that when it comes to hauntings. <laughs> this book also explores what it would mean to be able to see ghosts in this modern world, and especially in a country like the United States that has such a like dark and blood-soaked history. It's also about generational grief and trauma as well. And because of that, I think it would be perfect for a Mike Flanagan adaptation because of those themes. But also it's like, like I said, his works usually involve some sort of haunting, you know, haunted house mostly. But in this case, the haunted house is everywhere. The haunted house is you. And I think that's really beautiful. And I would love, love to see that adapted, please. <laughs> Suffer the Children by Craig DeLuey is one of the darker books on my list because it involves the death of children. But like every child in the world at the same time. So the story starts with every single child in the world suddenly dying for seemingly no reason. Three days later, they all mysteriously come back to life but changed. <laughs> the supernatural element in this story isn't ghosts in like the straightforward sense, but more so like the idea of losing somebody who is technically still with you. Like the, the parents in this story are just as haunted by the things that come back 
posing as their children seemingly without spoiling anything just as much as they would be if it were ghosts. It's just straight up. This book is obviously gonna be one, as you can imagine, that would make you cry as well, which is also just, I feel like, Mike Flanagan's bag right there. It's, it's tough subject matter, but with a horror twist. Hex by Thomas Old Hoyveld takes place in a Hudson Valley town that is being held hostage by a centuries old witch. Her eyes and mouth sewn shut, she wanders around the town, venturing anywhere she wants to into people's homes at any time. She also makes it impossible for anyone to leave without going insane. They're like, when I say they're held hostage, they're literally held hostage there, they can't leave. The conflict comes in when a group of the town's teenagers film the witch and post it online and it goes viral and then people start to get curious about the town, but that's dangerous because anybody that comes to stay in the town and comes to live there won't be able to leave ever again. We have a bit of a joke in <laughs> our creepy book club that I host every month uh, that like every book we read is about generational trauma. Um, this one's no different. <laughs> it's all about the sins of the past coming back to affect us in the modern world and how we're still paying for these terrible, terrible things that people who are long gone did. This one I think would be like most closely related to Midnight Mass, but without the super heavy religious themes. Because over the course of the story, the town kind of just starts to go crazy a little bit and everything kind of devolves into madness. It also kind of reminds me of a Stephen King book in that way, I guess. Maybe it's just like the small town with a, a dark kind of supernatural secret. Mike Flanagan, I, I think is gonna be adapting The Dark Tower. So he, he must like Stephen King. So I think he'll like this book. <laughs> really stretching with that last one. <laughs> Back to some actual ghosts because Mike Flanagan seems to really like ghosts. The Invited by Jennifer McMahon follows Helen and her husband Nate. They buy a plot of land in Vermont and are intending to build the house for themselves from the ground up. Not only that, but they're gonna do everything themselves. Like they're literally building the house, just the two of them. As you can imagine, the plot of land that they're building their house on has a dark history and Helen, who's very interested in history, starts to look into what happened and a particular witch who was hung on their land. I love this book because it is such a unique haunted house story. I feel like it's kind of similar to Ghost Eaters and it kind of turns on its head your idea of a haunted house, but instead of like it being the person who's haunted, the whole theme of this book, the whole point of this book is building a haunted house, like intentionally building a haunted house because you think of a brand new house that's never been lived in before is just built. You wouldn't think of that as something that's haunted, right? Because it doesn't have history. But as Helen starts to look into this witch and her lineage, all these generations of women, um, she finds artifacts and pieces of history and incorporates them into her house. And in doing so, her house becomes more and more haunted as she's building it. So it's kind of like taking this idea of, again, generational trauma <laughs> and facing it head on and accepting it and incorporating it into your life and accepting that as a part of yourself and moving forward in that sense. Um, I just feel like it would be perfect for a Flanagan adaptation. It also has multiple timelines that weave together and then, you know, start to make more sense as you go along in the story. Very Hill House, very Bly Manor. All right, this last one here, I'm making the biggest stretch, but I literally won't ever stop talking about this book. So it has to, it has to be included in this. <laughs> it's also a pretty big stretch because there's not necessarily any supernatural elements going on. But I feel like I would really love to see if anybody were gonna adapt The Last House on Needless Street, I would want it to be my plan again. So the story follows Dee, who moves in on Needless Street next door to a recluse, Ted, who Dee is convinced, kidnapped, and probably murdered her younger sister years and years ago. So while she's watching Ted, she thinks she hears another little girl inside Ted's house, and so becomes a race against time to try and save, to try and save another little girl. Despite the lack of like actual ghosts, 
this story is filled to the brim with personal ghosts and guilt and trauma and it all comes together so beautifully and in a way that's not like really exploitative of like trauma and mental health which unfortunately can be kind of common in the horror genre the guilt that d feels the trauma that ted experiences will literally bring you to tears like it's <laughs> it's so good it's a beautiful and it's a heart-wrenching book i can't really tell you quite exactly why it would be perfect without spoiling anything and I refuse to do that because I think everyone should just read this but honestly I just it's the most beautiful horror book I've ever read and that's why I think Mike Flanagan should adapt this one for sure. Those are some books that I feel like would be perfect for a Mike Flanagan adaptation and because it's so incredibly rare that he would see this video let this video just serve as a if you like any of Mike Flanagan's works then I feel like you would like any single one of those books. They're amazing books, some of my favorite ones I've ever read, so I'd highly recommend them anyway but especially if you're a fan of Mike Flanagan. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did there will be an end screen in a second that has some more videos that you can watch if the mood strikes you or not uh, but I'll see you very soon with a new video. Until then stay strange. Bye!